it is here. It is finally here. Mega Man is back with a brand new title for the Nintendo Switch, Sony PlayStation 4, and Microsoft Xbox One. It has been eight years since his last adventure, which was a throwback to his NES days. But for this one, Capcom has decided to bring the Blue Bomber into the 21st century. The graphics follow a 2.5 style of gameplay, much like Mega Man X8. Yeah, I'll get to the Mega Man X series. Definitely my next Mega Man series, though I still have Mega Man and Base, the Game Boy games, and the two arcade games in the Mega Man Anniversary Collection do, should I decide to go back to the classic series after this. And here's hoping it won't be too long before we get Mega Man 12. But anyway, we're going to start off this review with the story like we always do, so skip to this time in the video if you don't want to be spoiled. You have been warned. The story opens with a flashback of Dr. Light and Dr. Wily's days in Robot University. We see the beginnings of Light and Wily's falling out. Light could not condone Wily's research, and the board ruled in favor of Light. Why? Why are you fools so blind? One day, Light! One day the world will know I was right all along! In the present day, Wily awakens and a plan begins hatching in his mind. <sighs> Bad memories make the worst dreams! A genius of my caliber needs sleep to keep his brain in gear. Wait... That research from my youth... Yes! Now I'll show you light! Then Mega Man and his allies are going about their days when Dr. Wily attacks and steals eight robots. You know... At least this time we actually see him do it. No, I'm pretending to be good plotline, which is great! Mega Man wants to go after Dr. Wily, but Dr. Light installs the double gear system into Mega Man as he won't stand a chance without it. With that done, Mega Man sets out to stop Dr. Wily. There isn't much of a narrative, but there is some cutscenes and dialogue, most notably when you beat four robot masters. Mega Man will arrive back at Dr. Light's lab, and he'll relay the story of how he and Dr. Wily had their falling out. We were students then, each pursuing robotics research in our own way. Each of us was passionate about forging the way ahead. To a future where humans and robots might live together in harmony. However, while Dr. Light saw the value in robots and wanted human and robots to be treated as his equals, they could be true partners to humankind at last! However, Wiley saw robots as nothing more than tools to be used. Even robots that think for themselves will never be anything more than tools. Light can only think back into regret as to what has happened. Only I'd shown him there was a way to work together, instead of just telling him that he was wrong. Maybe we'd still be friends. A way to work together. It is the outcome of that meeting that led to the Mega Man timeline to be dissolved into war for centuries to come. Mega Man lore is so interesting. The graphics in this game are crisp and beautiful. They look so much better than... You know what, I guess I won't compare this to Mighty No. 9. Mega Man's running animation is a little weird. I guess 2D runs don't translate too well to the 3D plane. I also don't care for how slow he is when going up a ladder, which was never an issue in earlier games. I played this game off the Switch version, and it runs perfectly fine. I really like the backgrounds in this game. They're so full of detail and charm. The music is not the best, however, but the voice acting is fairly top-notch. As for Mega Man himself, he plays fine. He has the Charge Shot and Slide again. Oh, Charge Shot, how I've missed you. The Charge Shot can actually break shielded enemies and leave them vulnerable for a second. I like it. One change I really like is how the Rush Coil and Jet have been adapted to the single push of a button. So if I need to use Rush, I can just press a button instead of having to cycle through all the other weapons. On a side note, John Bailey did Rush's voice? The Honest Trailer John Bailey? That's amazing. I like how they streamlined it. I noticed that whenever I get near a pit that Mega Man will just hug the edge instead of falling backwards, or at least that was my experience. I hear others didn't have this luxury. I play it on normal difficulty, as the newcomer and casual difficulties are meant for newer players to ease into Mega Man. Mega Man has always been tough, but fair difficulty. The new gear system works in two ways, power and speed. Using the speed gear causes you to slow down time for a few seconds, while the power gear will make Mega Man more powerful. 
the speed gear can be a great way to get past tricky platforming sections that require a lot of patience. Unfortunately, Mega Man also slows down, so you have to adjust your timing with that. The power gear gives Mega Man more powerful shots. When you fully charge your buster, Mega Man will unleash several fully powered shots. However, there is a gauge that fills, and if you let it fill all the way up, you will be unable to use the gear system until it goes down. If Mega Man's health drops to below 3, you can activate Double Gear, which gives Mega Man the power to use both power and speed gears at once. You can fire three multi-hit charge shots at once that does so much damage to a boss. I only used this when I was fighting a mini-boss, as that's where you're supposed to use it, but it comes with a cost. Mega Man will be reduced to one health ticket and will be unable to charge his buster, so do so with caution. I do like how this enforces that using the double gear system comes with a cost. I haven't even talked about the weapons yet. I love these weapons. I love the block dropper. It's just so useful for taking out enemies from above. You can power up your weapons with the power gear, and it's just so good to use them because it makes your weapons so much more powerful. The block dropper becomes many blocks at once. The chain splash becomes a huge bomb of destruction. The scramble thunder is good for taking out enemies on the ground, and when it's powered up, it becomes huge electric balls of death. The Balance Ball can be aimed upwards or downwards. The Blazing Torch has an annoying arc, but powered up it brings down meteors. The Pile Dropper is also a bit annoying to use since it rockets you forward, but I use it to take out the annoying spike enemies that go along the ground. Thunderstorm allows you to use a blizzard, but it's really useful if you power up where it becomes a huge nuke! Wow! Oh, and there's the Acid Barrier, which I didn't use much. Not a great shield. I love the streamlining them for the use of the right stick as I can just pick my weapons on the fly. It's a great way to use them. The shop is back and finding bolts is really easy and I find myself accumulating them very quickly. You can get energy tanks, weapon tanks, beat calls, eddy calls, and even parts that allow Mega Man easier progression. The energy balancer is back, but my favorite's got to be the speed gear booster. As now Mega Man can run at normal speeds when using the speed gear. This makes the game so much easier at certain sections. Now I'm going to talk about each of the stages and what gameplay designs they offer to the table. Blockman stage. I did this stage because it was the one they had in the demo and... <laughs> yep, it's Mega Man alright. Blockman stage contains instances where you do have to rely on reflexes and timing. But when I got to Blockman, he did something that Mega Man bosses don't do. He gets bigger, activating his gear system with a whole new light bar. Now this just highlights the potential of the gear system, but I took him down no problem. Acid Man stage is a little annoying. If those acid bats go green, then they will start to hurt you. And there are parts where it's nearly mandatory to use the speed gear. Such a tense moment too when you see the spikes lined up and you just have to barely, just barely get past them. Acid Man is really simple as I just used the block dropper on him. Impact Man stage contains countless screws that come out of the walls, and you have to time your slides and your jumps just right to avoid getting hit by them. What really stands out to me is the boss fight with Impact Man. It's here that I found out how utterly useless the acid barrier is, as I could barely hit him with it. Fortunately, defeating him with the Mega Buster is simple enough. He's got predictable patterns. Now the best stage of all. Bounce Man. His stage contains a bouncing up and down on balls that will send Mega Man higher and higher, and I really like this as a mechanic, as it leads to really fun level design. The only part I remember not liking is the part where these enemies come out of bombless pits and hit you backwards. Yeah, that brings back memories. Bounce Man is a predictable boss, but it's fun to fight him directly. Fuse Man stage contains bolts of electricity that you have to time your jumps along. Once again, put the speed gear to good use here as it will save you from taking unnecessary hits. At certain points, it definitely feels like the speed gear is required to get past these parts without getting hit. Fuse Man is actually a pretty fun boss since he moves around fast, which gives the fight a fast pace. I was only able to defeat him with a lucky shot. Next stage, I did Tundra Man, and his stage is all ice, which means ice physics galore. One of my favorite effects is when the snow starts falling. It really adds a sense of adrenaline to your jumps. I love how dramatic Mega Man's death is in this game. He pauses for a few seconds and then explodes. The ending is thrilling where you have to jump through big icicles while the storm is coming down around you. Tundra Man is a dancer, of course. I must admit, using the power show of the Scramble Thunder does so much damage to him! It's just amazing! 
Next, they did Torchman, which has three blazing balls of fire that chase you, because of course it does. This is where I really recommend getting the speed gear booster, because it makes it obsolete in the end. Also, these annoying parts where you have to avoid killing the flame enemy, otherwise the lights will go out. As for Torchman, I just nuked him with the Tundra Storm. So satisfying to pull that off. Finally, that leaves us with Blastman. His stage is not much to write about. It has the whole exploding gimmick down. Fighting Blastman is actually pretty easy. He goes down pretty easy with the Blazing Torch, so that's eight Robot Masters down, and it's time to go to Wily, but first, a break. Before I tackle the final Wily stages, I'll talk real quick about the challenges you can do. I didn't dabble much into this, I did like the balloon challenge where you must only hit the blue balloons because the red balloons will take away your time, and you have a time limit of 12 minutes. Yeah, that would have been nice to know. I don't see myself going for all these, but they're nice to have. Now it's time to tackle the ending of the game, so skip to this time in the video if you don't want to be spoiled. So Dr. Wily contacts Mega Man and tells him of his location, which means it's time once again for another Wily Fortress, and it's actually pretty short. There's only two stages and they're not very challenging. The stages are longer than normal, so I guess they thought that balanced it out, but still. It's kind of disappointing. In fact, I beat both of them pretty easy. The first boss is... Oh, it's you again! Well, this time I got the speed gear to take you down. Why is it always the yellow devil? The second boss, Maver, and I beat on my first try. I'm not kidding, it was that easy. From there, it goes down exactly as you think. Defeat the eight robot masters again, and now it's time for Dr. Wily, and he's... really, really easy. This might be the easiest form of Dr. Wily yet. In fact, I beat both of his forms without breaking a sweat. He does go into double gear territory towards the end, but even then, I had no problem hitting him. So Wily is defeated, but he has a plan. <laughs> you leave me no choice. Time for plan B! I'm a helpless old man! Mercy, Mega Man! That's, uh... Well, I'll give you points for trying. Not really. Dr. Light appears and tells Wily that they can work together to make a better future. Mega Man wields tremendous power, but he has the intelligence to use it wisely. He's your vision and mine combined. If our ideas, our gears, could mesh together, Mega Man would be the result. We achieve this together. But Wily refuses and flies off to fight another day. I do wish there was some foreshadowing of X and Zero here, but I'll take what I can get. Anyway, everyone is rebuilt and it's a happy ending all around. Well, at least until, you know, the world gets plunged into a long war with Mavericks, but that's for another day. Wait, wait a minute, we're at Proto Man Base! They didn't show up at all! DLC, maybe? So overall, Mega Man 11 is a pretty solid game. It plays it safe, which, as I repeated, there's a time to take risk and a time to play it safe. And this is a time to play it safe. All in all, I'm happy that this game exists. Good job, Capcom. Now give me Mega Man X9. Now I'll just close with some words to Mega Man. Welcome back, old friend. It's good to have you.